Hi, this is Steve at blessedhopeforever.com. We've been studying together, going through Acts, uh, doing a survey of Acts, and we've uh, reached the 10th chapter. And so that's what we're going to be talking about uh, this holiday weekend. Uh, it's just a few days before Christmas, and we here at Blessed Hope Forever wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. Beginning at chapter 10, the Lord comes to Cornelius. Uh, he was a Roman centurion who was considered by some Christians to be the first Gentile uh, to convert to the faith, and he says that he should send men to Joppa, that's modern-day Tel Aviv, to call for a man named Simon who is called Peter. He's there, and he lodges in a house by the seaside. Uh, verse 6, uh, He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Uh, now, that's not there in the Greek. Anyway, the, the messenger of the Lord told Cornelius this. So here's a great man of power and authority, and he sends men to get Peter. And in the meantime, Peter's up on, up on a housetop. And the Lord gives him a vision from heaven, one I'm sure that many of you are familiar with. Uh, it was a vision. It was a time of signs for the Jews. The Jews seek signs. Uh, and these, will, these signs uh, will see that these signs will cease. These miracles, signs will cease as the Word of God becomes uh, complete. In the vision, God lets down a sheet with all manner of unclean beasts in it. And he says, Peter, rise, kill, and eat. You all know the story. Uh, it happens three times. Uh, Peter says, not me, Lord. Nothing common or unclean has passed my lips. He says that when he denied the Lord three times with a curse. Uh, you know, surely that's much more common and unclean than any food he might have eaten. And each time that the Lord kindly said, don't call common and unclean that which I've cleansed. We don't have any indication uh, that Peter suddenly uh, said, that, you know, the, the light came on. Uh, boy, it dawned on me. I see what you're saying, Lord, but... But while he was thinking about this, this vision, he's told that someone's downstairs and wants to see him, meant sent uh, from Cornelius. Cornelius, he's a righteous uh, man. He fears God. He has a good report among the nation of the Jews. And he was told uh, to uh, come here and get you. And so Peter went with them. Uh, certain brethren from Joppa uh, accompanied him. He came to Cornelius, and to his utter amazement, there is Cornelius with all his family uh, gathered together. In fact, Cornelius is ready to worship him. Peter at least has the common sense and the courage to say, you know, absolutely not. I myself, I'm a man. Verse 20, and there he preached the gospel to them. Peter's meeting with Cornelius drew a crowd. Uh, Peter says, I shouldn't be here. It's, it's illegal uh, for a Jew to be here with you Gentiles, but God has taught me, God has taught me that I should not call any man common or unclean. Verse 28, Obviously, uh, Peter was taught kindly by the Lord. Therefore, I came without objection as soon as I was sent. Now, why do you want me? Why did you send for me? Uh, Cornelius tells him. And then, so Peter then begins to preach. Cornelius says, we're all here. We're ready to listen to the things that are commanded thee of God. We, we, that is, we don't want your 
uh, opinions. We don't want your background or your personal testimony. And uh, maybe that maybe that sounds a little little rough, but but the things commanded thee of God. So Peter he opens his mouth and he says, "God is no respecter of persons. In every nation, he has those that fear, that reverence him, and work righteousness." And now we begin to look at the word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Uh, he's Lord of all. And folks, the only way, the only way that there can be peace by Jesus Christ is substitutionary death. Therefore, being justified by God's faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, said Paul. So when he preached peace, uh, peace when he preached peace uh, by Jesus, we, we have the entire gospel exactly as we've seen it so far in other references. Uh, beginning at verse 37, that word I say ye know which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit spirit and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him and we are witnesses of all things which he did both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem whom they slew and hanged on a tree him God raised up the third day and showed him openly not to all the people but unto witnesses chosen before of God even to us who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. I suppose there, there's always those who would argue, you know, why didn't he show him to all the people? Why just the witnesses? First of all, God wouldn't do anything wrong the way that he did it. It had to have been right, but we wouldn't do it any other way. We ourselves wouldn't do it any, any other way. He went back to his friends, not his enemies. Verse 42, And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained of God to be the judge of quick and dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Now listen to me, please, dearly beloved. You'll have to pardon me as I look at that verse for just a moment. My Bible says to him, give all the prophets witness, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. I beg you to listen to me, all right? If you look at it, the word believeth there in the text is a present participle and the shall receive remission of sins is not a future tense. It's an aorist infinitive, which means that its action precedes the present participle. So what the text is saying is those who have received remission of sins are those who are believing on him. And Yet we translate that with a future tense, but it is not a future tense. It's an aorist. The aorist infinity precedes the action of the present participle. So the remission of sins precedes the believing. It does not follow the believing. Now, dearly beloved, this is textual, grammatical, original language proof that new birth must precede faith and acceptance or water baptism or anything anything else we are seeing jews and gentiles merge into one body the body of christ it's peter's vision it's grace not law and here's the the organization called christianity nearly two thousand years later still preaching law from start to finish. 
While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Spirit fell on them who heard the word. Not on every single person there, but on those who had new ears, new minds, new wills, new creations in Christ Jesus. And they of the circumcision who believed, that's the Jews, were astonished as many as came with Peter. They were absolutely amazed because the Gentiles also had poured out on them in past time the gift of the Holy Spirit. That poured out in your text there is a perfect passive indicative. Those Gentiles who came with Peter, it is absolutely certain that what had happened had preceded the coming of Peter. It didn't follow the message of Peter. It had preceded the message of Peter. Now, I think that every faithful minister of the Word of God should realize that. That when someone hears and understands, and to our, our observation, their life has been changed, that would indicate that there's been a work of God in that life before they ever heard from us. Verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. And then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Spirit, as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. That takes us up to chapter 11. Chapter 11. Now when Peter gets back to Jerusalem, he has to come back and he testifies to what happened among these believers. And I believe once again, you don't have to agree in any way, but that's, but the water baptism here is a testimony for Peter. As we'll see when he comes back and vindicates his dealings with the Gentiles, the brethren were in Judea, uh, heard that the Gentiles had received the Word of God. Uh, when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. Boy, Peter, this is the wrong thing to do. You went unto men who were uncircumcised. Not only that, you ate with them. And folks, those things are all wrong if your heart is veiled, as theirs was. You know, obviously, even the early disciples hadn't yet fully grasped the provisions of grace. Peter rehearsed the matter from the very beginning, expounding on it. I'm certain that he went very, very careful uh, step by step in the logic that led him to Cornelius' house. I was in the city of Joppa, and I was, uh, I was not sleeping. I was praying. And I was in a trance. That's kind of the way I am in my study. Lo looks like sleep to you on the outside and, and so forth. He goes all through the story again to clearly indicate to them that what God had taught him, they also ought to learn. Call not that which God has cleansed common and unclean. If these Gentiles had had poured out upon them the gift of the Holy Spirit, then it's clear that God had cleansed them just as God had cleansed the Jew. You know, Peter's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm as innocent as new-blown snow. You know, I was not only in this trance, but right then, immediately, suddenly, there were three men who were, who were sent from Caesarea, Caesarea to me. They even knew my name. And the Spirit told me to go with them. You're going to tell me, no, that I shouldn't have? You're going to tell me that, you know, when the Spirit told me to go, you're going to tell me not to, I shouldn't have gone. We entered into the man's house. I began to preach, verse 15, and the Holy Spirit fell on them as He did on us. It was first, it was, it was Jew first in time and then the Gentiles. I then remembered the word of the Lord, how He said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. You know, that's, a, that's an interesting verse. The minute I saw this, I remembered that. Uh, 
you know, I, I said, where's water that we might baptize? Amazing. Now, I'm not suggesting that there shouldn't have been water baptism there. I'm telling you that the water baptism was for Peter. Peter remembered the word of the Lord. John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Since then, God gave them the same gift as He did us who believed on the Lord. What was I? Who was I? I couldn't withstand God. Couldn't kick against the pricks. And when they heard these things, they held their peace. They glorified God, saying, Then has God also to the Gentiles granted repentance, change of mind unto life. And now we see them scattered again because of persecution that had arisen about Stephen. Uh, and we see them spread all over as the work of the Lord continued. I am positive that it was God's design that the Christians be spread throughout all that area so that the gospel might be, be spread. The hand of the Lord was with them. Uh, a great number believed. They traveled as far as uh, Phoenice and Cyprus and Antioch preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. And some of them were men of, uh, of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of this, these things came to the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas uh, that he should go as far as Antioch, uh, who when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord, for he was a good man and full of the Holy Spirit and of faith, and much people was added unto the Lord. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus, to seek Paul, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, and there stood up one of them named Agabus, and signified by the Spirit that there should be great famine throughout all the world the known world, which came to pass in the days of Caesar. Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt in Judea, which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Now we're going to stop right there, and Lord willing, we're going to continue into chapter 12 next week, where that this transition from one dispensation to another continues the the jews were still under the economy that was with them they hadn't recognized that christ himself was dwelling in his people now that's the way i see this that they lived in that transition period i hear the lord say you know here the holy spirit is with you and now he shall be in you uh, it's something they suddenly became aware of in their life. And the same thing happened to you and I. Well, I know this is a short message, but uh, I wanted to get this out before Christmas. Uh, I love you all. I truly do. Rest in Him. Let's close with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, thank You so much for Your words. Thank You, dear Lord, so much for one another. We long to grow in grace and knowledge of you. Just strike out, filter out all of that which is error, but just seal to our hearts the truth of thy word. For it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.